Okay, let's see if you can't make friends with your TI-89. I know most of you guys are a little bit uncomfortable with the TI-89 currently, but you will learn to love it, I promise. So to get you kind of uh, getting to know your calculator a little bit better, I thought I would start with some uh, simpler problems and kind of relate it to some things you've already done on the TI-84 and how it looks slightly different, where to find some of the buttons. Uh, the first button to find is how to turn it on. So like let's, that's down here, the on button. If it doesn't come on, if you probably need new new batteries or uh, if you have new batteries in there and still doesn't work, then we will chit chat. Maybe we can trade in another calculator for you. But once you have it turned on, there's a couple of things I want you to have in the right mode. So usually in calculus, we do radians. I know some of you guys are taking physics and you will be changing it to degree, but that means you have to remember to switch from degrees to radians all the time, which is fine. I'll show you where that is. So here it, uh, we're gonna go into mode. I'm gonna maybe make the screen a little bit bigger here so you can see. And some of the things you can arrow up and down the, on, on your navigation tools here, just like on the 84, you wanna make sure uh, for example, float tells me how many decimal places you want it to round to. You could have, I often have it at six or at 10. It just, just kind of depends on the necessity. Don't you, I know that your AP exam usually lets you round to three, but it's a good idea still to have more than that, especially for our purposes. But that can change uh, how many decimal places the, where the decimal float is or how many significant figures or things like that. So that's what, um, we want to just leave it at six or a little bit higher. Um, some other things we need to, we're definitely here for the angle. If I use the arrow key, uh, I can change it from degree to radians. We want to make sure ours is in radians to ensure that that happens. Either hit the number one or hit enter. So one or enter. If you're in physics, you can switch it back and forth. That's where to find it. Um, we're going to go down to uh, pretty print and make sure it's on. It's It'll give you like with pi in it, it will do radicals and show your answers in terms of radicals. So that makes things a little bit easier. You can either use the arrow down key to go to the next page or you can hit, hit F2 to go to the next page of things. Now, the one thing I want you to go down to is this one here, the exact or approximation. Please make sure it's either set to auto or to um, exact. If you're doing um, something where you need decimals instead, we can always switch it to a decimal a a in the end if we have to. So I, it's a good idea. I tend to have it on auto. Sometimes, depending uh, on what uses we need it for, I might switch it to exact, especially if I'm asking it to factor and it keeps giving me decimals in the factors, then I go in and change it to exact. But other than that, um, having it at auto works really fine for, for our most of our purposes. Um, for us to save this, though, I have to hit enter. The enter button is far down to the right, right there. Now we have saved the settings. Some other things that are useful to know, if you have, for example, you have things stored in variables, so you have F6. I see that I have F1 through F5 under here, but if you look really closely in blue, it says F6 over the F1. That means you hit the, the blue button. We're just gonna clean out the letters A through Z just in case whoever had the calculator last, last had something stored in there. So you're gonna hit the blue button and then hit F1. And you see it says clear A through Z. Or you can have it start a new problem. I'm just gonna clear A through C. So choice number one, I hit one or I just hit enter and I hit enter again. So now we've sort of got cleared our plates here. Everything is ready to start. Um, nothing is interfering with what we find. So I'm gonna use the calculator geometrically to solve first. So if I'm solving this geometrically, I need to put it into the grapher just like you did in the 84. That is the y is equal to. So you see here in, in yellow or lime or whatever color you wanna call it, that means hit the diamond button and y is equal to just like you would on the 84. And then we are going to enter um, the, I, I guess I'll do calc intersect first. The left-hand side is y1, 
and the right-hand side of the equation is y2. So how do we put absolute value? The key is, and I want you to look at our keyboard a little bit closer here. So this bar on the first column down here, there's a bar there. That is not the absolute value bar. That's a domain bar. So do not use that. It's very tempting and it's gonna make it look correct, but that's not what we want. The way we found on the 84, the absolute value was in the math feature or the math button on the 84. Well, they, the 89 has that too. It's just located in a different spot. Do you see here in the blue, it says math. So you're gonna hit the blue button and then hit math over the five. And then to look at what the screen looks like then, it'll look like this. Um, in numbers is where the absolute value is, but if you're not sure, you can always use the arrow to the right key just to view, oh yeah, that's what I want. Uh, choice number one on the 84 was always convert to a fraction. Uh, on this calculator, they say just find the exact value, which will also leave things in terms of pi, which is nice. But we're gonna pick choice number two is the absolute value. You can either use the arrow down key or you can just hit the number two, which I'm gonna do. And then we're gonna put in, so down here in the active bar, it says ABS, and then we're gonna put in an X minus one. Now the quick button for X, you can also use the alpha button, but X, Y, and Z are used so often that if you look at the fourth row here, the fourth row, you have X, Y, and C, you're gonna hit X and then minus one, minus one, end parenthesis. And watch what happens. Ooh, let me do that. Watch what happens when I hit enter. Oh, now it won't let go here. Come on, buddy. It's just trying to be fancy about it. Uh oh. Let go. It won't let me do it. Enter. Enter. Look, it puts the absolute value bars there for me. Come on. Change it back here. So it puts the absolute value bars there for me. And then for Y2, I'm going to put the number five. So the number five there. And then enter as well. So now just like the 84, um, the way that the 84 would have that it was active would make the equal signs have a, a cursor that they're on the equal signs. Now we just have check marks here. So now this means that this is active. And then you hit graph. Above the F3, you see in, in lime or yellow or green or whatever color, hit the diamond button and hit graph. And the zoom feature, if you wanted to give you, get like zoom standard, just like you used to do on the 84, is you hit F2 once you've graphed. Right now, I'm happy with where I am. I can see that this has two intersections. I need to find those two. I'm going to use the calculation part. So that's F5. It says here, it says math. Let's see if it'll let me do this without messing with it too much there f5 up here so i'm going to hit f5 i want to calculate the intersection it is even choice five just like you had on the 84 so choice but what's different here for calc intersect is that you got to read the directions what two curves do you want to uh, pick i can use the arrow up and down key to jump from the different curves you see it's uh, the top right hand corner up here, it says the number of the curve that I'm using. So this is Y2 currently. If I use the arrow down key, it jumps to Y1. I wanna pick Y1, so I'm just gonna hit enter. Curve two is Y2, but I have to use left and right bound. So I'm gonna use the arrow to the left key to make sure I capture just the one intersection. So right now I'm to the left of one of the intersections. Hit enter and then use the arrow to the right key. It's important that you only capture one intersection at the time and hit enter. And then it finds the intersection. So we just found the intersection. It's negative four, five. So I wrote down the intersection, negative four, five. We'll talk about what it means in a second. And then you're gonna do the same to find the second because you gotta find all of the intersections. So you're gonna use the same method, F5, which is math, 
choice number five, which is in, you can use the arrow key as well to get to intersection. Curve one, enter. Curve two, enter. But now I need to make sure I'm to the left, which is the lower boundary. I'm to the left of the actual intersection. I am right now, enter. And then I need to use the arrow key to get, oh, I can all the way to the right of the intersection I want to find, which I am now. And it gives me the second intersection, intersection which is 6-5. Back to algebra. In algebra, you know that if you use the graphing calculator, what I'm really interested in is just the x's. So my solution set is going to be, I'm going to write this down, x such that x is equal to negative 4 and 6. It's just the x part of. That's how you use your graphing calculator. So now I want you to try question number two, done exactly the same way. You're going to use uh, Calc Intersect to help you do that.